welcome yeah. everyone to the continuous mo monitoring combined with continuous testing by yusuf and bargav good afternoon everyone hope you all are doing good uh, we are doing good uh, i am mohammed yusuf from kongspec digital uh, working as lead as debt uh, my co presenter bargav is sitting next to me he is uh, also as debt so we we are going to present uh, continuous monitoring combined with continuous testing our uh, experience what we have found uh, in the projects and applications we are working so a quick walk through of what i'm going to cover now uh, later bargav will take uh, take the stage uh, first we will see the applications and releases what we have in the context of devops that how many applications and how frequently we release them what is that in the uh, for these applications how many require live streaming or basically requiring continuous monitoring and uh, how do we release these applications uh, after doing this continuous monitoring activities uh, how frequently we need to do continuous monitoring these details and what conditions triggering this visual anomalies so this basically the differences then continue what is a continuous testing versus continuous monitoring the technicalities of it then what is the solution we have built internally uh, this is just a beta version it's not a full blown version but still it serves the purpose for us and we will see the details about that as well and then finally we'll see the demo app let me quickly get into this topics so this is the thing uh, applications and releases we have totally 24 applications that uh, myself and bargav that we are, what we are talking about in this uh, forum we have weekly five releases two verticals basically but uh, right now we are focusing the other one i removed basically it's island gas but uh, the primary focus last few months has been maritime digitalization eight applications are dealing with live stream data out of 24 we need 6 hours of continuous monitoring of various widgets that stream time series sensor data so this is the context why we need to build this or why basically the continuous monitoring the that problem first of all arose the continuous monitoring uh, basically the, these are the types of uh, anomalies i can say uh, what uh, if you say basically why we need continuous monitoring uh, there are certain conditions when we stream the uh, sensor data continuously for hours if you stream just for 10 minutes we may not see certain issues or no issues at all but when we continuously stream most of the times these are the common issues plotting hang it may run for 3 uh, 4 hours fine but suddenly for 15 minutes or 1 hour no data no plotting but back end will have the data so what's happening with the front end then what's the interfacing between the back end and the front end those details plotting hangs then white patch intermittently basically every every 10 seconds once there is no data and then again the plotting goes on when this happens when the when this pattern is formed how do we get the background details no idea without monitoring then plotting flickering plotting goes fine for hours together but suddenly it starts flickering it's most possibly due to the front end reason many a times we have seen but not the back end reason then single track anomalies single track basically is just uh, one single line or one track which is one only one sensor data we can say most of the times that basically has these effects white patch flickering plotting hangs in single track multi tracks multiple sensors are configured they continuously the data is streamed from multiple sensors and the same effects happen in the multi track this is more complex than the single track and the no plotting i already mentioned so these are the various types of anomalies i can say visual anomalies that have the the root causes associated with the front end most of the times but there are cases back end uh, also triggering these cases so there, there are both front end and back end, back end causing this uh, anomalies but we deal with right now only the front end uh, detecting by monitoring the front end visual anomalies so how we basically uh, get to see these errors uh, the issues or the anomalies when what we do so that we see this switch to different screens for example i am on page a uh, i start the streaming it goes fine no problem i switch to now a different screen it, it should allow me but when i come back i don't see a plotting or any anomaly whatever i mentioned in the previous slide that might happen so we need to verify there is no anomaly when we switch then where the streaming the plotting occurs within that canvas or that uh, region we zoom in and zoom out that plot the tracks or the lines 
when we do this the anomaly starts happening then another one double click or right click within the plotting region the next one anything that we do on the page outside this not moving to not navigating to any other page but still doing some other activity on the same page this also has caused anomalies then the last one start the plotting change the selection of vessel or sensors because we deal with uh, maritime digitalization so vessels and sensors are predominant here so when we change from one to another and come back to this vessel on the same page only these anomalies occur so these are the typical cases what trigger when the production users of steam or running the application when they try to see the continuously monitor the things or when they try to uh, report any things related to the functional behavior they many times see these are the things that happen when we do these activities switching zooming in double clicking etc so we have captured these details as the root causes now a quick overview testing versus monitoring many times we basically interchangeably use the word but there is in our case at least we found it really really different testing on uh, theoretically speaking we might do 10 minutes 15 minutes means one test might take maybe 30 minutes also but if a test single test runs for 6 hours 8 hours you would not call it test rather we would it would be more qualified to call as monitoring because in testing we validate certain conditions and we expect the state to be the starting point of the application state to be so and so and the ending point also for the validation say so and so but in the monitoring it can begin in any state and it can finish in any state during this period we should be able to detect any anomalies whatever i listed up before so in the testing we see predictable behavior single shot plotting of data in one shot i have 10000 data points just i say plot all 10000 data points are plotted this is more functional in nature but not continuous once plotted nothing happens it's a static page now i can now perform the validation here only true or false validation either it's matching or not matching it's basically a simple image comparison techniques we have been using for decades that's the technique we will be using here so now monitoring live plotting basically it involves more dynamics it's possible to face various types and range of unpredictable behavior i i explained i detailed a few of them in the previous slides there are some good examples it is monitoring not testing because as i said we don't really begin in a known state but in testing especially in automation testing we begin in a known state but here that's not possible and it is continuous in nature testing is not continuous in nature and this is the best way to detect anomalies by doing a continuous monitoring not by continuously testing even if i run 10 times 20 times 100 times the same test i may not find the anomaly but if i perform two times a continuous monitoring i might be able to figure out some uh, i may be able to you know encounter certain issues this is important longer the monitoring higher the probability of detecting anomalies so if i run one hour i may not find but if i run six hours definitely i will find at least one the numbers may not be high but definitely there are some glitches so here we can't rely upon binary evaluation saying true false pass fail it is a state uh, wherein we have to determine based on the the percentage of anomalies that we encountered let's say in my 6 hours of monitoring i just encountered only twice or once an, an anomaly i might still pass the test i might be okay to move the build to the next level promote the build to the next stage a bit stage in our production but with testing we always look into the details we basically need to take a call okay test failed okay now do the root cause analysis why test failed but here we don't need to do that and it is a case by case basis again we have certain mechanisms implemented uh, using some fuzzy fuzzy logic so we need really high speed high precision monitoring and uh, monitoring test systems uh, test systems needed to be in place uh, that's what i mentioned uh, we have built a internal built an internal solution for this i would not say it is really high speed it is just a first version so but still it is doing it's, uh, it's really relatively it is really good for us so far 
So th this is the solution, image vision. There are three modules, image grab. This is grabbing the screen. Image matcher, this is for image comparison. Actionize, there are two aspects here. One is visual automation, which is uh, doing the tasks, the typically conventional code-based automation tools like uh, Playwright, WDAO, Selenium, whichever tools that, that they do the typical automation activities, emulating a user behavior on the screen. This tool can do, but it is a visual automation, not we pass here images, the target image or the element image. If I want to type in Google search page, uh, Agile India, I will, what is my locator with visual automation? That search box itself is a, my locator. There is no expert, there is no CSS as we do with Selenium or any other code-based tools. So we will see that, Barga will demonstrate that. This is the one I so far explained, live stream plotting monitor. And this tool has the capability. So there are two aspects within this module, Actionize. So what is this uh, structure or the very high level architecture? So these are the components basically I can say. There is a front end using that we write the tests, which, which is in uh, TypeScript. The back end is in Python. So certain machine learning algorithms, computer vision, et cetera, things are there. That's a back end. I may write tests in any language. So front end I can build in C sharp or TypeScript, whatever. So that's what the test development kit we say, like software development SDK here, we say test development kit TDK. And these are the backend part, uh, the interfacing part, configurations, JSON providers, dependency injection, et cetera. And there are some good, uh, very few APIs that basically have this, uh, get the job done for us, whatever it be, uh, image grab comparison, live plotting, et cetera. This is just the slide. So this is a very high level architecture block diagram. You may write test in any language, but so far we are supporting only protractor. We are in migration to playwright as well, adding the package for that. But it's a, it's a language neutral. Uh, we can build in Java also, we can build in C sharp also. That's okay. The backend still remains in Python. And these are the different modules. So API stack, the engine is here. This does the job for hours together. If I monitor it eight hours, six hours, this takes care. I don't need to write uh, any code except just calling the API with the configuration I need. That's what I will do in the front end. So this is for image comparison block diagram. The previous one was image gram. This is for image comparison. As you see here, we have multiple algorithms mentioned. SSI, PHAS, perceptual hashing, SSI structural similarity index, risk plan, that is a combination of two different machine learning algorithms. They are used for image comparison. So this is one module. The last one action is so here we have visual automation and live stream monitor. There are two aspects. That's what this blocks are depicting. And the engine driver, of course, everything remains the same. Only this engine part will be different between this model, among these modules. So I just want to quickly talk about the image comparison module uh, before I show that, uh, get into that uh, demo part. What really uh, makes us uh, what really made us to build this tool in the first place? It was image comparison, not live plotting. The, we, have, we are dealing with uh, 400 to 500 images. It is not easy for us uh, to build that. Uh, a solution wherein you traditionally depend upon those tools, uh, uh, whichever they provide, do a pixel by pixel comparison. It was not possible. So we had to do certain things using a computational algorithm. It helped us reducing the Pass, fail percentage just due to some pixel mis mismatches, 80% of the things went out. So these are the explanation of that. Let me quickly go through. Next one, this I already mentioned. This I already mentioned. All right. So now we'll get into the demo part. So these are the anomalies that I mark anything, whichever I define as anomalies are in that images. Now we are running the test. So the test you see here, these are written in TypeScript, Jasmine. So this is the sample application we built because our application is really heavy. It would be uh, fitting for the demo purpose. So this is some extraction out of our application and you see the plotting will happen as well here. The red line is what I don't want, but it is present. So my test should fail. 
and the report will be generated like this. So wherever red lines are present, they are failed basically. Because I define that red line as my anomaly. Whatever I define, I take a snapshot of it, I keep it in my baseline. I run the solution. So whichever I define that under baseline, they consider it as anomaly. Under negative, I expect it's a negative condition check. I don't want them to be present, but they are present, so fail. There is an anomaly present, so you see net result false. So in this case, it's a red line only. It present, whichever screen it was present, it was failing. So basically it took some, for demo purpose, it took some 10 seconds. So those images are there. Now green. Here I expect a particular line to be present. If it is not present, then I should fail. It's a positive condition check. So that's my baseline. These are my baselines. They should be present while I start my application plotting. So now green is present. Now I don't care about red because I'm checking only for presence of green. Okay, my test now should pass. If I don't have any green, it's okay because I don't check the negative condition. I'm checking for the positive. So if green present, okay, I'm passing. If not present, I don't care. But in the whole run session, I expect at least once it should be present. If not even once, I will fail the test. So this is a report. So you see under past conditions, you have everything because that's a presence. All the images, snapshots clearly having the green lines. So that's why it's under past. So in the failed, you would not see anything. Failed is empty folder. And this is the simple, very quick demo that what we can do. This is the result that is generated. In case you have, just can you show again that, the result? Yeah. Yeah, you see, true, true, true. In case if it is failing, which image at what point in time, if I run for six hours, what point in time the failure occurred, it, only that particular point, it would fail, not everything. As we have seen on the red. Yes. So it gives the context what time it failed. So I can gather the system information and take a call around this anomalies. That's the demo quickly from me. Uh, Bhagav, can you just quickly go for that visual automation thing? Yeah, sure. Uh, as I hope everybody understand what exactly the problem we are resolving. So, uh, so just a quick overview of the applications that we deal with. So you might have seen like uh, stock exchanges. So most of our applications use most of the graphs and we uh, deal with the live streaming of data. So live streaming of data, let's just say like, for example, if I add a line over here, so if there is a data that is coming from the vessels and we get the live streaming. And while doing the live streaming, I need to analyze whether this is plotting with the right data or not. That's the problem we are trying to solve with the test automation. And that's what Yusuf has explained right now. But to achieve this, we need an automation solution that is capable of running your test automation. Let's say protractor, protractor can only bring you till here, but it cannot just uh, do the validations and all. It cannot read all this data and it cannot um, uh, run the run the algorithms and then it cannot show you which one is passed and it, it can fail. So we tightly integrated our solution with the web driver, uh, with Protractor, and right now we are doing with Playwright. So we can do all kinds of things along with the play uh, with the player. Um, oh, sorry, I'm I'm sorry, guys. So with Protractor. So. I'll just show you a small video of uh, Google. We all know it. I'll just show you how we can do any website automation. So I'll just show you with the same image vision that is tightly uh, connected to Protractor. And we can also use it for the regular test automation as well. It's not just for the graphs and all. So just for the regular test automation as well, it can do all kinds of actions like um, the typing, right click, left click, scroll up, scroll down and everything but there is no locator it's only the images itself based upon the images it does all this like the mouse move right click and then type now and then pressing the enter now so it's it's entirely image based and then now scroll so it scroll picks an image and then it scrolls over there and then picks another image and then it scrolls up 
so that's how it is designed so be, so we use protractor but we don't use experts we use images images based automation for the complex problems that we have over to you so and the main benefit here is it helps us maintain reduce the maintenance locators keep changing frequently and it cost a lot uh, but images don't change that the appearance the look and feel the visual aspects don't change that frequently uh, and even if it changes it's a matter of just grabbing on small snap and just add it to the repo image repo so that's how basically it brings that value and moreover for live streaming also we need visual interaction to be performed within image you perform click double click whatever that the traditional conventional tools cannot do so we basically need this kind of tool so there are those are the benefits so it as i said um, image comparison also comes handy image interaction also comes handy live plotting also comes handy and that's how basically we could save some uh, effort definitely uh, we need to add a lot more features of course but this is so far so good for us that's the that's the thing we want to tell so uh we are up for questions guys if you have any questions please do ask us uh thanks uh, yusuf uh, barkov